Hello there, everybody. And are you all well today? <laughs> oh, good to hear that. And me, never better. So, where are we off to today, you ask? Well, how does a visit to Bulgaria in the Balkans sound to you? <laughs> That's great. Now, I got a message from Marto X4 on YouTube a few weeks ago asking me if I could make a flight from Sofia, LBSF, to Varna, LBWN. Now, originally the destination was London Heathrow, but since that would have been a four hour video, I asked him if he would think of a closer destination. So he came up with Varna. Mm. Now, both Varna and Sofia are destination ports for Ryanair. So I will be in good company there. Now, here's a picture of Marto X4, or Martin, as he's more properly known. I discovered that Martin is from the town of Sopot and he makes videos of cycling and more, he says. Oh, by the way, Sopot is a delightful town located 115 kilometers or 71 miles east of Sofia. It's also, I discovered, a favorite destination for people who like to paraglide. Have you ever done any paragliding, Martin? Our point of origin today is the very ancient city of Sofia. And the city's landmarks reflect more than 2,000 years of history, including Greek, Roman, Ottoman and Soviet occupation. Today, Sofia is the capital of the Balkan nation of Bulgaria and is located in the west of the country, below Vitosha Mountain. The city is named after the ancient St. Sophia Church, originally built during the reign of Byzantine Emperor Justinian I, and that was in the 6th century. Our destination today is the port city and popular seaside resort of Varna, on Bulgaria's Black Sea coast. It's a beautiful town, as well as historic, as these pictures show. Varna is particularly famous for what is called the Gold of Varna, which are some ancient Thracian jewellery that were discovered in a nearby necropolis, and which is today displayed inside the Archaeological Museum, along with Greek, Roman and Ottoman antiquities. And I discovered for myself that the gold of Varna is the oldest gold treasure in the world. And guess what? It's about 6,000 years old. Wow. That's even older than I am. <laughs> I've been to Sofia, but not to Varna. So this is going to be a new destination for me. I went online and discovered that Bulgaria Air flies the route each day. So we are going to be following Bulgaria Air Flight 971 or FB 971. The airport sceneries I have for today's flight are also very good. Sofia Airport LBSF is freeware scenery, believe it or not and it was designed by Viktor Bukhov at VR Creations. Varna Airport, 
LBWN scenery was designed by Andrei Bakanov at Just Sim. So Martin, if you're ready, it's time to go into pre-flight and check the all-important weather and make ourselves a flight plan. So shall we go? Okay. Well, here we are in Flight Aware, and we're looking at Bulgaria Air Flight 971. Here are the other designators right there. Now, this is a historic flight because the latest flight hasn't left yet. So we're going to look at a historic flight to see what it did. According to this, it left Terminal 2, Sofia Airport, and arrived at Varna, and it doesn't give a stand or anything like that. It departed four minutes early and it arrives 14 minutes early. So that's pretty good going there. Here's the route that it took, as you can see right there. Let's have a look and see what the cruise altitude was. Ah, 25,000 feet. That's that's about right. That's it's because it's not all that far. So 25,000 feet is a good one. Average delay for departure is less than 10 minutes and taxi time is the same in Varna. Now I went in to Flight Radar 24 to have a look at a Ryanair flight that departed today, just a little while ago. I wanted to see what the stand was that it went from and what the runway it was using to depart. Here you can see the Ryanair flight departed from here. This particular stand is 1-9. Stand one nine, and then it came out. It it did a didn't have to do a pushback. It just went out forwards, went out to the runway, did a little twist, and there it did. It went out, and and then departed on this runway right here. And that runway is 27. But notice it took off from this point and not all the way from the end. I'm not sure that uh, Mr. O'Leary allows that, but that's what this particular flight did. So uh, we, of course, are going to uh, follow the rules and regulations. If we have to, we'll go all the way to the end and then depart. But we'll see. We'll see. Now, here we are at LBSF. This is Sofia Airport. And you can see that the general direction of the wind is coming in from the northwest. It says wind direction is 250 degrees at four knots, varying from 190 to 300. Well, that's interesting. If we, we may have a crosswind on the takeoff. Visibility 10 kilometers or more. There's a few clouds at 5,500 feet. So not bad for takeoff. Then when we get above the clouds will be better. Temperature is 11 degrees. Q&H is 1017, just a little bit above standard. Looking at the runways, here's the airport. And you can see here the main terminal buildings are all along the bottom end. And it looks like, again, we will be taking off from runway 27. It's 11,800 feet, so plenty Plenty of runway there. We could actually do a uh, mid-runway takeoff because there is plenty of runway there. We might try that.
Hmm. Going to our destination. According to this, the wind is 100 degrees at 11 knots, a little stronger. Visibility is okay, temperature 12 degrees, Q and H 1016. So a little higher than in Sofia, but not particularly high. And VFR, and the history is, it is VFR in the history. Looking at the runways, in all likelihood, we are going to be coming in on this one, which is 09. So that looks like the one that will arrive in. The elevation of the airport is 230 feet and the runway is 8,258 feet. So we've got plenty of runway, no issues there. Right, going into Simbrief now. We are Ryanair, we are 186, and we are departing from LBSF and we're going to go to LBWM. Here's the alternate. I don't recognize this one from the designation here, but we'll find out in a moment. There's our airframe. Cruise profile is six. There's our registration. Schedule flight time is one hour, 10 minutes. Departure two seven, as we thought, and arrival zero nine, exactly as we thought. We are full, of course, and we have one ton of cargo. And you know what that cargo is, don't you? Champagne and caviar. But I suspect, Martin, you're a little young for uh, the champagne, so we will have some other drinks on board, especially for you. And here's the flight plan that is given to us. The Goal 2T is a standard instrument departure. Then there's the Goal is a waypoint. The November 605 is a route. The top car is another waypoint. And then the top car for Delta is the arrival star. Going down, we're looking at the route. And there it is, going up and going across, up here and into Varna. If things go pear-shaped, then it looks like this is our route and, oh, Istanbul is going to be our alternate should things go pear-shaped. All right, let's go to the top. We will save this and then we'll generate a flight plan and see what we get. Here we are. We are, there's the origin, destination, there's the alternate, and we are flying at flight level 270. Okay. We are Airtime is 40 minutes. There's the block fuel. And there's the routing. It says planned optimum flight level. In other words, that's the best altitude, cruise altitude for our airframe and the destination point. Going down here, let's look at the information. There we are, Ryanair 186. F270 is our flight altitude, and there's our flight route, and there is our alternate should things go wrong. We have cost index 6, we'll need that information, we'll need the average wind information, we'll need to know the block fuel, that's 
a little over five and a half tons of fuel we need to load on there. Reserves are 2,928 and the trip and taxi is 2,055. No tankering recommended. If nothing changes, this will be the official routing and I will be certain to post this on the information box down below the video. Here's the descent wind that we're going to need. There's the flight level 200, which is 20,000 feet. There is 15,000 feet and there is 10,000 feet. Temperatures are a little cool, you know, minus 25, 15 and four, but it gets warmer as we get to the ground. Right, we'll go down and we'll have a look and see what the weather is like for this trip. Well, there you can see the weather patterns. There's a pushing a little bit of a frontal movement across there. And some winds are pushing in from down here. Hmm. But we should be all right. This is flight level 240. We're going to be at 27,000 feet. So we'll have a look at this. It's tailwinds all the way in, which of course is a good thing. And here at 30,000 feet, again, it's tailwinds all the way in and some strong winds up above and also some very cold conditions here. 40, minus 46, minus 47. Wow. We'll have to watch out for icing conditions just in case. And there's our profile. Starting out from Sofia, making our climb. We'll not have an awful long time at our cruise altitude before we make the long descent down into Varna on the coast. Well, here we are in Navigraf charts. I just had a look here just to show you a couple of things. Over here is Sofia, that's our point of origin. And right about here, here is Sopot. Martin, this is your area. Right there, this is where you live. And all those hills where people run off them in order to do the paragliding are all these on this side, I believe. And our destination is right here on the coastline, Varna, right there. Not a great lengthy flight, but just right for us today. So, new flight from Simbrief and bring it in. We'll open up the charts because we need to have the airport we need to have the parking stands and coordinates. I'm going to show this. This is the overlay for uh, our departure. So this is the, the Goliama 2 Tango or Gol 2T. So it comes around here and then goes up to the goal VOR. All right, I'll put that also in the bottom. Going to the charts list for our destination. We'll need the airport information. We'll need parking stands. We're also going to need to see this chart because this will be the star that we'll be using. 
And we're coming in on runway 09. So looking here, ILS Zulu 09. I'll pin that and let's have a look at the overlay. So here you can see it brings us all the way in up here to MPED, which is the initial arrival fix. And I'm going to go now onto this. So ILS Zulu runway, and that joins up the route right there. Pretty straightforward. Doesn't look like there's going to be any surprises. It should be an excellent day for flying today. So if you're ready, Martin, let's go into the cockpit and start the procedure. Ah, oh, there you are, Martin. Do come in, have a seat, buckle up, and let's get ourselves ready, shall we? I'm parked here at stand 23, stand 23, right in front of the old Terminal 1 building in Sofia. And over to the left is the Terminal 2 building. But this seems to be where all of the Bulgaria Air flights depart from is in this section. And certainly it's in this section where all of the Ryanair flights go in and out of. So I'm following the same route. Let me show you what the airport looks like. Look at this. Isn't this detailed? There's Lufthansa Technik, one of their hangars there. I'm swinging around and showing you the... There's the main Terminal 1 building there. And all the way around. There you go, seeing the rest of the airport from that direction. This, of course, was designed by Viktor Bukov, who is VR Creations, but this is freeware. I highly recommend it. And my frame rate, 30, 34, 33, that's not bad. And i am got 4K up on the screen, which is pulling as much detail as I can. Okay. Right. Now, the first thing that we've got to do, Martin, is we need to turn on the battery. We need to check that we've got enough voltage on the battery to be able to start the APU, which is in the tail of the aircraft. So I'm starting that now. It's like a, a donkey engine. It's a smaller engine that will then start the bigger engines of the aircraft itself. The weather today is cloudy, overcast, but not bad. I can see there's plenty of cloud overhead, but the visibility underneath it seems to be very good. So we'll be fine. Now, I'm looking for this light to come on. As soon as it does, I'll switch to that. There we go. Now, what I've done is I have switched from the battery to the generator. So now I have up here, I have 115 volts. And that allows me to do the rest of it. So I'm going to start the IRS, that's the sat-nav system. We have two sat-navs on board, so I've got those started. I turn on the galley, you never know, we may get a cup of tea, coffee, hot chocolate, something like that from them. There's the emergency exit lights, I put those on now. No smoking, 
and fasten seat belts. Up here, I'm going to turn on the left and the right window heat. And then here, I'm turning on the probes. Now, these are the probes that stick out underneath. There's two of them. And on a cold day like today, I like them to be good and warm. Then here, I'm turning on the hydraulic pumps. Notice the lights here for the forward service hatch and equipment are lit up. That's because the stairs are out and that's where the passengers are climbing onto the aircraft one right now. Okay, then over here I'm going to turn on the APU bleed and this is where you'll start to hear the heat coming through. Turning on all of the packs, listen. There, there's that rush of air that goes through the nozzles over everybody's seat and that is sending out warm air right now to get the aircraft cabin nice and warm. All right, now let's do the FMC. All right, now down here, the first thing we need to do is we need to put in our initial point and that's the airport that we are currently at and we are at LBSF so LB and SF now we are at stand 23 I don't know if that is in the database oh it did come up so let's check and see whether or not the database is correct if we're at stand 23, it should be 42, 41, 4, 42, 41, 4, and 23, 24, 2, 23, 24, 2, that is correct. So put that into the temporary memory here, and then push that, and now our GPS system has our initial starting point. It now knows where we're starting from. Go into the route and we put the information in again LBSF, LBSF, and we're going to go to LBWN. Varna. We are Ryanair 186, that's R-Y-R 186. Then I push the next page and we go down to our route. First point that we go to is G-O-L, so G-O-L, direct, and it will be the, the top one where it says Goyama. And then we go on the November 605, so November 605, that's the route. And then we go to Topka, T-O-T-K-A, T-O-T-K-A. And that is it. We activate, execute. Now I'm going to go to the fix, and I'm going to put in the destination coordinates there. So. Barna is LBWN, LBWN. We need a four mile circle, we need a 10 mile circle, and we need a 30 mile circle. There we go. Now I go to descent, go to forecast, and here I need to check the destination it says transition level is set by the ATC but transition altitude in Bulgaria is 12,000 feet. So I'm going to leave the transition level as it is. But I do need to put the information in for these three altitudes. And there we go. 
The Q&H at our destination is 1016. So I put that in. And then we need the wind direction and speed at those three levels. So at flight level 200, it is 268 at 43, 268, 43. At 150, it is 261 at 42, 261 at 42. And at 10,000 feet, it is 269 at 30, 269 at 30. And then we execute that. Go to departures. And now we need to tune in to ATIS to listen to the latest weather and airport conditions. And ATIS here at Sofia is 124.05. So 124.05. Sofia, airport information, echo 1038, wind, Zulu, visibility 305 at 5, greater than 20 miles, sky condition, temperature, ceiling 6000, broken, dew point, altimeter 121, 1016, landing and departing, runway 27, VFR aircraft, say direction of flight, all aircraft read back, hold short instructions, advise controller on initial contact you have, echo. Well, we have echo. And it's runway 27 that is in use, so I'm going to put 27 in there. And looking at our Navigraph charts, we're going to be using the, the Gol 2 Tango. So Gol 2 Tango. There it is, Gol 2 Tango, and we'll put that in. Then we go to departures and go to arrivals. And we are proposing to come in on ILS Zulu at 09. And we are going to be coming in on the, the Topka 4D. So Topka 4D, that is that one. And we'll just execute that. Now we'll go to legs. And I'm going to switch now to plan and go through this plan and see if there are any inconsistencies that we have to deal with. So here's the screen in front of you and I'm just going to go through the step to eat of each one. And we're going to check out to see if there's any breaks in the flight plan any discontinuity and look at that it goes all the way in to the final for a landing everything is good right we can certainly accept that now we're ready to map out the route and perform the initialization we have the fuel on board uh, 5,663 kilograms. So we have reserves of 2,928 kilograms. The trip and taxi is going to be 2,055 and that comes to 4,983 which is a pretty much even five. So I'm going to put five in there. Reserves 2928, that is close to 2.9, I'll put 2.9 in that. Double click this to get the zero fuel weight and it calculates. With cost index 6, our cruise altitude today is 270, so 270. The cruise wind for our journey is 267 at 46 so 267 at 46 transition in altitude as we determined was 12,000 feet so I'm going to put in 12,000 feet and then execute that go to N1 limit we'll take the 12 degrees Go to takeoff, we'll use flaps 10, 
center of gravity is 23.8 and the trim wheel, I've got to set the trim to 4.77. Push once on each of these and here you can see it gives me V1, rotation and liftoff speed of 144. So now I'm going to also check our if we're departing on runway 27, then the course I need to set is 269 degrees. So I'm going to spin this to 269. I'll put 269 in the heading here for the flight director. And I'll do yours as well. Is that okay? So 269 for you as well. Our altitude, cruise altitude, is 27,000 feet. I'm going to put 27,000 feet in this as well. Now this, this is our cruising altitude and this is for aircraft pressurization. The Elevation at Varna is 230 feet, so I'm going to put 250 in here for our landing altitude. Okay, and then the max speed is 144 over here. Okay, got that. Now I'm going to turn on the flight director here, flight director there, push that push that and you see the VNAV and the LNAV and a green light appears on both of them and that says that we have a good flight plan. So I'm now going to arm the auto throttle, push the VOR1 here, VOR2 I'm going to use both VORs today and I'm going to show you why in just a moment. Now I'm going to turn on the yaw damper and the flight continuity light went out. Now, at our destination, the ILS is, the localizer is 109.9. So I'm going to put 109.9. And on this side, that's for VOR1. And then I'm going to put 112.4, which is the Varna VOR. So 112 and 0.4 so now I have both VORs are active so that we can get a good fix when we need it next I'm going to put in the decision height and the decision height is 404 so I'm going to put 404 and the barometric there we are 404 I've got that put in there so it will say minimums minimums when we get down to the the point all right so far so good right we're now ready to do a checklist so fuel is on, and the pumps are all on, windows all locked, <laughs> seatbelt signs of course are on, stairs are up, and the forward hatch is now closing. You hear that? That's the electrical me um, mechanical stairs being brought in. And the door lights and lights are out. MCP is now programmed. It's all set. Takeoff thrust is done. Speed CDU pre-flight is correct. Rudder air alarm is free. Now, when we depart, we're going to be going down to runway 27. We don't need to do a pushback here. We just drive straight out forward, turn left, and go on to the main active taxiway to get to the end of runway 27. And now I'm going to put the anti-collision light is now on.
And the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to start the Navigraph charts. Right, I've now got the Navigraph charts up on the screen and you'll see them down here. So I'm just going to enlarge this. That red arrow, that's where we are and you can see where we have to go. So we'll follow Juliet all the way up to the hotel taxiway. But to, get, to make sure that that's what we do, I've now got to go into ground and get taxi clearance. And we're going to depart to the east. Sophia Ground, Ryanair 186, request taxi for east departure with gold. Ryanair 186, taxi to and hold short at runway 27, contact tower on 120.4 when ready. Taxi, hold short, runway 27, Ryanair 186. Well, we are cleared to taxiway and all the way to runway 27, so we now know where we're going. <coughs> So, are you set? Which engine would you like to start today, left or right? Um, your choice. You'd like to start number one? Number one engine it is then. So I'm going to switch this generator to number one generator. I'm now going to turn off the packs because we want the air to rush to go to that engine to start the spin. And then we've got to look over here. In a moment you'll see the light come on so i'm switching now to the engine start valve has opened here you can see the n2 spinning up when this gets to 24 then i'm going to introduce the fuel coming up very nicely and there's 24 bringing in the fuel now I'm looking now to see if it ignites, it's igniting, there's the engine gas temperature heating up very nicely, spinning up, I'm looking for the low oil pressure light and to go out, which it did, we should hear the engines in a moment, there, you can hear the engine just caught in, okay, I'm looking up here, I'm looking for 115 volts there it is now I'm switching to engine number two and switching the start valve has opened here you can see the N2 is building up when this gets to 24 I'll bring in the fuel for engine number two and coming up and there's 24 bringing in the fuel now I'm looking for the engine gas temperature to start heating up. It is, it's building up. I'm looking for the low oil pressure light to go out over here. And it did. We're getting a good start. In a moment, I'll, I'm going to look now for 150 volts up here. When we get that, then I know that we, there it is. Now I'm looking for this little tick mark to go off here. There it did. Now I know that the generators on both engines are now working properly. So I can now switch to power coming from the main engines. Over here I'm going to turn on the packs again and put the heat back on into the cabin. I'm going to turn off the APU bleed and turn off the APU. So far so good? All right. Now I'm going to turn on the taxi lights and I'm going to do the check. Generators are on, probe heat is on, anti-ice. I don't think we'll need it at this point. Isolation valves are okay, they're all auto. Start levers idle detent, flight deck door is closed and locked, recall check, flight controls check, flaps, we're going to go now to flaps 10 and I'm 
going to make sure that we have green lights on the flaps. Stabilizer trim is 4.77 is correct. Auto brake is RTO check. Speed brake lever is down in the tent. Ground equipment is clear. And And there's the flap showing green lights. We are set and ready to, to go. So steady light is on, everything is set. All right, attendance secure. We are about to taxi. All right, adjust the seat. Brake is off. Are you ready, Martin? Okay, hang on tight now. <laughs> Here we go. Give a little boost to get ourselves unstuck. And just go down here and we follow the yellow line. Just like that previous Ryanair flight did. We'll go down here and we'll look for, that's the one that we want, we want to go up here. So we're cutting across the apron right here to get to this main taxiway here. There's plenty of snow on the mountains surrounding Sofia at the moment. Look at all of the snow. It does look cold out there, doesn't it? Do they do paragliding when the snow's out like this? Are they still doing that or is that just simply a summer sport? Just curious. All right, we're going to turn left up here. We have to check and make sure nothing is coming, of course. Have you ever done that paragliding, Martin? It does look like a lot of fun, doesn't it? So we go up here and go all the way to the Hotel Taxi. There's Mike and the next one is Hotel. This really is lovely scenery around here. Look, look at all of the detail. Victor Bukov you did a lovely job with the scenery, my friend. You really did. And this is freeware. Ah, this is great one. Great stuff here. All right. Stick your hand out, would you please, Martin? We're going to turn right. <laughs> and we turn down here. There we go. interesting we've got an airplane coming directly towards us well now we're gonna have to play a game of chicken here aren't we so I'm just going to stop at this point and I'm gonna hope that he's gonna turn off and go down there Otherwise, we're going to have what they call in the films a Mexican standoff. Let's see what he does. Up. 
up he is look at that he's turning off
to go to work. 
some of that beluga caviar. You know, you should know about that. This is the area where a lot of that caviar is produced, isn't it? And I'll give you a shout and let you know as soon as we're on our descent and approach into Barna, okay? See you in a little bit.
was around Sofia, but the Black Sea is directly ahead. I still don't have the airport in sight, but it should be coming up. city of 
Bomber directly ahead of us. And gear is going down. We have three green lights. Flaps are down. 500, check. 400. 400. 3 and approaching minimums. 200 minimums. Minimums, we are committed Sync to rate. land. Sink rate. 50. Flaring 40. out. 30. 20. 10. And there we are. Reverse thrusters are on. Now we're slowing down. Yes, indeed. And we'll turn off here. What do you think, Martin? Do you think this is good? All right, just apply a little break here. This is the Bravo exit. As soon as we've gone over the whole short line. Six, contact ground on one, one, minor point five. Going to one, one, minor point five, one, one, eight, six. All right, I'm going to stop here while we do the cleanup. to go to work starting the APU flaps are coming up now I'm going to look for stand 23 or 24 let me have a look and see where they are. So we're on the Bravo one. And we need to go down there. And then turn left. And then terminal one and two. Terminal one is out there. Terminal two. And then we turn right into stand 24. If we can make that, we'll be doing very well. So... Flaps are up. Okay, here we go then. Let's see if I can do this without getting lost, eh, Martin? What do you think? So we need to go not to this first line but to the line after that and then turn around and our parking stand should be over there on our left a little bit beautiful scenery now this is made by An Andre at Just Sim. Andre, you did a lovely job with this. A lovely job. Exquisite detail on this. Frame rate is 28, which is really very good. I've got to look now for stand number 24. Now this is the old Terminal 1 building and then the Terminal 2 building is right next to it over there.
one this is. Ah, this is 24. We'll just turn right down here. Passengers are disembarking to go into the terminal building. And this, this is Varna Airport. Lovely, lovely scenery. Okay, everything is, looks like it's shut down and smooth. Good. And, all right. APU is off batteries off shutdown is now complete this is the airport at Varna look at this look at the detail of this and we've got a halfway decent day here today much warmer here than it was in Sofia when we departed this is the new terminal 2 building And there's a catering vehicle for Varna Airport. Well, there you have it, Martin. Thank you for this. This was a nice short flight. Did appreciate that very much. But I was really impressed by the scenery. Bulgaria is a beautiful country. We flew almost over the top of you where you were in Sopot. But I hope that you enjoyed the flight. I hope that we did it all right. And thank you for the suggestion. I do appreciate it very much. And I hope I'll see you around on Ryanair 186 sometime in the future. In the meantime, bye everybody. And I'll see you on the next flight of Ryanair 186. Bye.